Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, what is going on, folks? This is your Yankee Hardcore Pipe Bomb Messiah here, which you, of course, your personification of excellence when it comes to Yankee baseball talk here on YouTube. It is officially Monday, July 29th, 2024, and um, we are just almost 24 hours away from the MLB trade deadline, so a lot of the rumors, I'm going to be busy trying to uh, dissect and find the latest news and rumors when it comes to the New York Yankees. And one of the news and rumors that I want to talk about is um, Blake Snell because there is a lot of talk about him being on the train market. And um, it's it's fascinating that, he, that you're talking about him on the train market because uh, we all remember what happened during the offseason. The Yankees... Wanted to get him in the offseason, and it looks like they're contenders at doing it again. And we talk about the fact that this team needs pitching. And they want to make that playoff run because they have that one-year loan from uh, Juan Soto. And John Heyman, and this is what John Heyman um, said, that and this was on Twitter, actually yesterday morning, that the Yankees are among six teams to check in on Blake Snell. While Giants listen, Snell turned an uber-dominant performance Saturday, 15 strikeouts, and with the San Francisco Giants, he was saying that the starters are killing it now, and they're just four and a half games out of the third wild card. So, other complications, New York Yankees in top ta tax bracket, and um, the player option for 2025. So, um, we'll talk about that because um, you look at Blake Snell, and I was actually doing research on Blake Snell today, the numbers. I mean, Blake Snell has been killing it this month, and... So I guess you could say everything is working on his path. I mean, he gave up two runs this month in 24 innings, 30 strikeouts, not to mention what he did on Saturday with the 15 strikeout performance. And he did that in six innings. He only gave up two hits and two walks. And... You look at Blake Snell, when you look at his season, everybody was talking about, yeah, this is going to be um, a dud season. This was a guy that wanted what? A lot of money. He's a Boris client. And also the reason, too, was he had injury issues. But not to mention, too, a 5.1 ERA, that's not impressive. But if you really look at it, maybe this was the fact that he didn't have spring training because he was trying to get that contract. He was trying to get those big numbers. And when you look at this rotation, let me talk about Marcus Stroman. They're lucky. The Marcus Stroman is lucky the Yankees won that game on Saturday. Because Marcus Stroman was trash on Saturday. Nestor Cortez. Now, John Heyman actually reported this too. That the Yankees. They're putting Nestor Cortez on the trade market. I wouldn't be surprised if Nestor Cortez gets traded. I mean, trash season, number one. Number two. He only has a year left of his contract, so you know the Yankees are not going to pursue Nesta Cortez next year. And Carlos Rodon. Now, Carlos Rodon yesterday pitched decent. Yankees got the win. And when you look at this rotation, and we talk about it a lot, we talked about it a lot throughout the season, they were overachievers. Um, do I really think Blake Snell would fit in this rotation? I I'm not convinced. 
because of the numbers. I mean, when you were trying to get a guy and you gave him an offer of six years, $150 million, and he wanted to get more, and I understand that. I understand because he won the Cy Young last year. And then all of a sudden, he got the two-year, $62 million contract. Now he can opt out after the season. So, it's not new for the New York Yankees to go after this guy right now because they know. They know the contract is cheap. And are they going to take the rest of his contract and give up more prospects for Blake Snell? Let's say it like this. They weren't willing to go over $150 million. You really think that they're going to give up top-tier prospects for a guy who might opt out after the season? So, And then, if he doesn't opt out, you're only going to get him for a one-year rental. So this is technically... If you're looking at the best case scenario, you're only getting a guy for a year and a half. The worst case scenario is it's a rental for two months. I don't see them getting Blake Snell. I really don't. But you know the Yankees. They're going to drive up the price tag. And I think that's what they're doing here. Now, I understand people want it because the numbers have been good for Blake Snell. I get it. But here's the thing, though. What happens in August and what happens in September? When you're transitioning from the National League to the American League, we'll see what happens. But the thing with this is too, and another thing that I want to say as well. Do you really want to trade a Blake, and this goes to the Giants. Do you really want to trade Blake Snell? Knowing the fact that you're four and a half games out of the wild card and you're still in contenders mode. Do you really want to do that? If I was the Giants, I want it. I would try to keep him. That what I would do. And um, let me pull up where they are in the standings right now. I got to pull up the wild card standings in the National League. Since we're all talking about it right now here. Um, who has that last wild card spot? The New York Mets. Yeah. The New York Mets, especially with what the Mets have been doing lately, and especially the fact how they swept the Yankees, they're still, the Mets are still in it. I mean, you got, look at, look at right now, and I'm looking at this. The Diamondbacks are not far off. St. Louis is not far off. Pittsburgh. Is not far off. The two games down on the Mets. And actually I stand corrected. The Giants are three and a half games. Down on the Mets. And let me see their winning streak. They've won four games in a row. Not a four game winning streak. So you look at this national. And I'm going to say like this. Any team. That's five games down on that last wild card spot. You're pretty much still contenders. I I still say that the Cubs are still contenders. Cincinnati is still contenders. Nationals, they're not going to make it. Miami and Colorado, their season's done. So it's just a matter if, if you can really jump on... And this, I mean, you look at this right now. The wild card in the National League, oh my goodness. It's a do or die. I mean, 
Atlanta's got the fourth spot. San Diego's got the fifth spot. I could see San Diego trying to get a Blake Snell. They're 57 and 51. But yeah, it's it's something that you got to see as a baseball fan and what's going to happen um, as you get into the dog days of the baseball season. So uh, let me all know what you guys think about this. Of course, you know, if there's any more rumors, and by the way, on the Nesta Cortez Jr., um, one of my subscribers, Adam Creedy, actually sent me that, and um, I actually saw it on Instagram. So, um, yeah. So, if there's any more news that comes out today with the Yankees and uh, the trades that they make, I'll probably do a video. Uh, Michael K. you know, he's going to be on his radio show today because the Yankees are in Philly. And I know he'll talk about it. So, we'll see what happens because, you know, now you're in a train mode. Now the Yankees got to do something. Um, whatever happened to the deal when it comes to the Tampa Bay Rays closer, uh, Fairbank? Whatever happened to that? Because obviously we need a closer. Clay Holmes isn't the guy to do it. We need relief help and we need... Um, at least another uh, infielder. So I'm out, guys. Stay safe. Keep your family safe. And remember, God is good. Bye, everyone.